In the world of PDFs, Adobe's Acrobat software has been the go-to choice for editing, signing, and converting PDF documents. But in this video, I will be reviewing what is regarded as the best alternative to Adobe's program for PC and Mac, and if you needed more incentive to try this program out, there is a special discount provided down below for viewers of this video to receive $60 off in the description or in the pinned comment below. Let's get into it. Wondershare's PDF element is regarded as the best Acrobat alternative, a simple-to-use PDF editor to maximize document productivity. It offers users the easiest way to create, edit, convert, annotate, and sign PDF documents on their PCs or Mac computers. Now before I continue on talking about PDF element, I just want to let you know, in case you're interested in getting this program, you can either get it from the Mac App Store, to which you can easily get the latest version from there, or you can get it directly from Wondershare's website. So you got some options as far as getting this program. Anyways, back to the actual overview. In addition, PDF Element costs less than Adobe's offering, especially at the time of my review, with the standard version currently costing only $59 per year and the Pro version costing only $79 per year, compared to the around $180 per year cost of Adobe's offering. Not a fan of the subscription model? Well, Wondershare offers a perpetual license to buy PDF Element, where you own the license to the software and only pay a one-time fee. Both plans include a 30-day money-back guarantee. Not convinced? Well, let's not forget that there are over 100,000 companies using PDF Element, including Hitachi, Bombardier, Gentex Corporation, and Constellation Brands, to name a few. Now, what about PDF Element makes it review-worthy, you may ask? What about it would make me want to use it over Adobe or any other PDF editor? It does contain the same feature sets of exporting a PDF to other formats, highlighting and signing PDFs, and even annotating a PDF. And on top of that, it can be used on iOS or Android, much like Adobe's program can. One feature that comes to mind is the integration into Microsoft Word. Now, I know there's other programs that do this too, but I like the PDF element version because it allows you to export straight into PDF element and edit it right away, which is very nice to have. You can also easily redact lines and protect sensitive information in a document, which is also very simple to use. And in one click, you can make a form that's ready for editing right inside of the program. And best of all, a feature that's known as OCR, which is a way to make scanned PDF document text editable, is also included. In the, at least the pro version from my review. And it is very useful if you have like a scanned document for which you want to make, you know, something you can change, highlight the text, make whatever changes you want to it, and it's not just a static image or whatever have you. And if it matters to you, this product will work on as far back as Mac OS Sierra and even Windows Vista. So there's no concern regarding compatibility. Not that running older operating systems is a good idea unless you have a strict reason to, but at least PDF Element has you covered. Now I could go on about all the great features found in PDF Element, and they are pretty nice. But what I want to do is to cut to some footage where I actually demonstrated PDF Element and a few of its features so you get an idea as to what to expect with the program when you actually use it. So with that having been said, I would like to cut to that footage now so you all can take a look at PDF Element. So let's take a look at the Macintosh version of PDF Element. I'm not going to go crazy in depth in this section of the video, but I will show off some of the features of the software. So let's open it up. You'll start out at this page where you have recently accessed documents off to the side with the link to open up files whenever you need to open up different files. Of course, you have access to all your menus up here, but that's just a typical Macintosh program. You can access your preferences up here just like any other. So there you go. So let's open up a sample PDF I have here. And here we are in PDF element. Now let me just move this off to the side so you all can see the user interface more easily. Now, take a look at the user interface for a moment and tell me that it doesn't look clean because, well, uh, this is my honest opinion. This isn't uh, anybody telling me or paying me to say this, but honestly, I really do like the user interface of PDF Element. Everything's out of the way. 
your document is in plain view, and it's really simple to get access to the tools that you need. So some of the more chosen tools that PDF Element has put out for us to make use of are markup, text, image, link, form, and redact. And of course you have access to all your other tools in this menu as well, including your OCR text recognition, adding a watermark, adding a background, adding a header and a footer, encryption, and so on. Very useful. And it's very easy to find where your stuff is located. So let's say for a second I want to add a link to this PDF. So we'll just click the link option, and up top we have options given to us. So let's say we want to open up a web page. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll drag open a box, and here we have a pop-up that asks us what web page we want to open. Now, typically you would want to copy and paste something here, and that's ideally what you would do. But for the sake of demonstration, we're just going to utilize Google. So we'll just put in the link to google.com and save it. And now, whenever we want to go to Google, we just hit this preview option and it just asks us, hey, make sure that you know what you're doing. But as soon as you press open, then boom, up comes your web browser and there's Google ready to go. So very nice feature to have. Now I know that's a fairly fundamental feature of a PDF editor to put links into your document. Typically, of course, if you're working with something in Microsoft Word and you put in a link, it's smart enough to realize that it's already a link. But it's just nice to see that there's another way to add links to PDFs that might already be pre-formatted. You don't have to try to script the formatting on the PDF to add a link. You can just put one out to the side. And the nice thing is, is that it's a little box. You can resize it and put it pretty much anywhere in the document. Now, of course, this is based on the document in question. This one in particular, of course, allows me to do this because it's just a sample. But my point being, very simple to add links in PDF element. And there's some other things too, such as the redact tool. Now this one gives you a pop-up saying that it allows you to permanently black out and remove sensitive content. So it requires two steps, mark for redaction and apply redactions. So this one has a couple different options up here. So you can do text and images, pages, and search and remove text. So let's make use of the search and remove text. So let's just put in a word, let's just say ridiculous as it shows up about right here in the document based on my mouse cursor. So let's just type that in. So R-I-D-I-C-U-L-U-S. As you can see, there's all the words that are ridiculous. And we can go ahead and select them all. And then we can mark them for redaction. And once we apply it, boom, as you can see, they are now redacted from the document. Very simple, very easy to use. So as long as your document has text that is searchable, or if you use the OCR function in PDF element to make text editable from a scanned PDF, for example, you can still use this redaction tool, which is very simple to use. So now I want to see if I can demonstrate the OCR function. I have found a PDF for which is scanned and does not have any searchable or editable text. It is just scanned pictures into PDF format. So here is my document. We're going to go ahead and take it and bring it into PDF element. And here we are. So as you can see, it automatically brings up a prompt saying that this is a scanned PDF. Please perform OCR to recognize text. So it gives us the handy dandy option to perform OCR. So let's do it now. And as you can see, we need to download the OCR component. That shouldn't be that big of a deal. It's right here. This is how you install plugins into PDF element. Again, very simple. It automatically brings it up for you and downloads and installs. So let us do this and we'll come back once we're ready to use OCR. Okay, so I had to do a security check for some reason because Mac OS likes to do those. So let's go ahead and reopen our PDF here and perform our OCR. So we're primarily going to use the English language 
and down sample to 150 dpi, that's probably fine. So let's go ahead and let it do its check. Okay, and as you can see, we have completed our text recognition, so let's go ahead and open. And this is a kind of not very good example, if I'm going to be honest, because some of the text is skewed diagonally, so it's not perfect. I imagine that if you were to do a better job of scanning this in, then you'd have an easier time with editing this. So let's just zoom it in here to fit the width of this so we can actually see what we're doing. But generally speaking, it did get most of the text. And as you can see, it's better formatted, although it's not perfect. As you can see, again, there's still some errors with the formatting. And some of the items are a little bit kind of skewed. But for all intents and purposes, the uh, function did its job. And you can see, you can highlight the text and do pretty much whatever. It's actually not bad. I would actually consider this to be a success. Now, of course, things that are image heavy, formatting heavy, I don't expect those to be perfect or for that matter, extremely brilliant. But if you need it to, for in this case, to convert all of this text into something for which you can come over here and search for. So let's search for plenum. And once it does its search, well, that wasn't really a good search because I don't believe plenum is in this, but let's just say we'll use uh, short because it's right here on the front page. Here you can see there's a few different items or you could use a uh, patch cord. And there you can see there's some searches and there are some questionable ones. You can kind of see there it's got the question mark block, but I would say this was mostly a success and I would consider this to be way better. You could probably like I said, do a better job scanning it because ideally you want this to be as straight as possible before you even perform OCR so that way it makes the work a lot easier. But I would say that this was a pretty good success regarding the OCR function. At least I think so. In fact, I'll actually save that because that could come in handy later for obvious reasons uh, for my college because you know I, I use this for studying purposes so it could actually come in handy. So let's try a couple more of the functions here before we wrap this section up. So let's just say we want to add a watermark to this. So first you have to create something. So that makes sense. So let's just make a template from text, let's just say. And let's just put sample in all caps, Helvetica font. That's fine. Something like that. And let's use this. Oops, I pressed the uh, edit button on accident. And I wonder if we can add that to this. I think we have to drag this over, or do we have to add this? Uh, maybe we have to add it in from here. Do we? Yeah, maybe Maybe that's how we're supposed to do it. I'm not too familiar with this function. Oh, wait, here we go. Here we go. And then it wants us to make a save, so we'll just put on the desktop once again. And there we go. So now we can go ahead and bring it into PDF element. And as you can see, now we have our sample watermark applied. Probably not the best demonstration of it, if I'm honest, but I'm gonna get the hang of it in practice. And ideally, uh, you would go through all the functions of the program before you do a review on it. But since you know I'm a very busy person, and let's just be fair, I'm not gonna go into the nitty gritty details as to why, I think I can figure it out in a pinch. <laughs> but honestly, everything about this program so far from my usage is very easy to understand. It's simple to learn and everything is right there where you would expect it to be. Because with Adobe, I found that some of the options for which you would be searching through menus and other places to try and find where you would have the same sort of functionality. Whereas this, all the tools that you need are right here within a reach of a mouse cursor, which is brilliant. So let's try this batch encrypt function here. So let's go ahead and take that one with the sample uh, watermark applied to it. And let's just throw it in with a, this is just gonna be for a test. You would normally not want to use 128 bit AES. You'd probably go 256. But we're just going to demonstrate this. So let's just make 
a uh, password here. So let's just say want to restrict it to, you know, you have the password to open the document. So let's just toss in a password here and let's apply that. Again, we're going to save it to the desktop and there we go. So as you can see, now we have our document and as you can see, it doesn't have a preview on it. It just has the sort of uh, Mac OS preview PDF icon on it. So let's go ahead and close out of the other PDF here and then we'll try dragging this into a PDF element. And as you can see, now it asks us for a password to unlock. So we'll type in our password and there you go. Now you have an encrypted PDF. Again, basic functionality. You can pretty much do this within most operating systems anyway. It's nice to see that you can encrypt the individual file from within PDF element, which is pretty nice. So one thing I do want to check, I want to see if opening this up in the preview program will actually prompt us for a password there as well, or if it'll tell us something else. Oh, as you can see, yeah, it's not just for PDF element. As you can see, it also asks us for the password here in Mac OS Preview. And if we type in the same password, as you can see, there we go. We now have access to our PDF. So that's a nice peace of mind. So you don't always have to have access to PDF element in order to access your encrypted PDFs. It basically works with everything, or at least the 128-bit AES works with everything. At least I would think so. So for all intents and purposes, at least from what I can show you all today, that is a taste of what you can expect inside a PDF element. Again, very easy to use, very easy to learn, understand where the tools are, how they function, and overall, I would say that it is very comparable to Adobe, in fact, maybe even more so just from the ease of use standpoint and its performance for opening up PDFs, scrolling through them, making changes, especially on a Mac like mine, which is very old and is not even going to get Mac OS Big Sur. I mean, the fact it got Catalina was a bit of an impressive feat of engineering in and of itself. And I'm still kind of impressed as to how well it runs. So I will give credit where it's due. This is very, very impressive for a non-Adobe PDF editor. And I know that preview on Mac OS tends to be pretty quick with opening PDFs. And for its intended function of just reading PDFs, that's fine. But as far as editing PDFs go, I would say this is probably one of the better, if not the best uh, PDF editors that I've actually used, at least as far as the ones that I've used. And that's realistically only saying like Foxit, Reader, and Adobe. I would say this one would be at the top if not at the number one spot. And that says quite a bit, but honestly, I would say quite a bit of good about this program. Now, of course, that's all for intents and purposes, just speaking about PDFs. There's a lot that I haven't touched about this program for which it can do. So again, this is just a small little glimpse of what you can do with PDF element for Mac, but there you go. Hopefully the demonstration showed you a little bit of what you can expect with PDF Element. So that is pretty much going to wrap up my review of PDF Element. Once again, I would like to thank Wondershare for sponsoring this video. And if you'd like to get a discount regarding your purchase of PDF Element, check the description down below and the pinned comment once again regarding links to get an additional discount. And with that having been said, I'm going to end this video here. If you like what you saw, click the like button. If you didn't like it so much, well, the other button works too. If you want to see more content just like this one or perhaps more entertaining content in the future, click the subscribe button and don't forget the bell so you don't miss when I upload new videos. And with that having been said, thank you all very much for coming to watch. I will see you all in the next one.